Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at quadratic inequalities. Now if you can solve quadratic equations, these are fairly straightforward. There are a number of ways of solving quadratic equations. You can factorise, use a quadratic formula or complete the square. Now I do have different videos on those methods, so please do take a look if you need to practice them. But it's really up to you which method you do choose. I'll try and use all three in this video just so you can see them, but feel free to do it whichever way you please. Do grab a paper and pen and have a go along with me. Let's get started. Okay, let's start off with a fairly easy quadratic. Now this one I'm going to solve by just factorising by sight. Now to solve this I've actually changed the inequality to an equal sign just to make it easier. Now, I'll get two solutions. Now, there are two different options for giving your answer at the end. Because this is an inequality, you could have that the solutions are between minus 4 and 2. That's one option, and that would be written as x is between minus 4 and 2. Notice I'm not using an equals as well sign because it didn't have one originally. Now that's one option. The other option of course is that it's less than 4 and greater than 2 so either side. So that would be two separate inequalities written separately. x is less than minus 4 and x is greater than 2. So they're the two options and we don't know just by looking at it which option is correct. So the best way of finding out is to do a very quick sketch. Now this is a positive quadratic graph. So it's going to be a positive parabola going through minus 4 and 2. It doesn't need to be a sophisticated graph, just literally the shape. And I'm going to look at this here. It's greater than zero, it's positive, that means it's above the x-axis. If all of this stuff is greater than zero, then it's this part of the graph. So it's all the stuff that's above the x-axis, because that's where y is positive. So the whole point of the graph is you can see then that x must have to be less than minus 4 and greater than 2. And that's the answer to that one. Okay, so make the inequality an equal sign for a second. Solve that quadratic and get your two answers. Pause the video and see if you can do that yourself. The method I've used there, by the way, is in a different video if you want to take a look. Well done if you got those two solutions right. Now to see how to give the final answer, let's draw a quick sketch of the graph. Now this time it's less than zero, so it's going to be below the axis, and that diagram shows me it's x is between minus 5 over 2 and minus 1. So that inequality can be written the other way. And by the way, when you, it's this option and it's just one inequality, those signs always go that way round. I can use the equals part of the inequality as well on this one. And that's the answer to that inequality. Okay, again for this one, Remove the inequality, make it equal to zero, and get your two solutions. This time I'm going to have a go at using the quadratic formula, just to change it up a bit. In an exam, it's a really nice idea to use a different method to the one you previously used to check your quadratic solutions are right, if you have time. So have a go at solving this, pause the video, and come back and compare with me.
Okay, well done if you got those solutions right. Now let's quickly sketch a graph to see if we can finish this inequality. Now because it's less than zero, it's underneath the x-axis. So it's between minus two and two thirds. Okay, last one. Now I'm going to use completing the square for this one. And if you've done that so far, please do practice that as well. Okay, I actually made a mistake there at first. I put minus one for some stupid reason. I thought three minus two was minus one. The majority of the marks that are lost on core one are through stupid mistakes like that. So it's always good to be checking things as you're going along. I'll tell you my thought process. I was looking back at this and I quickly factorized it in my head and I could tell that it was gonna be x minus one and x minus five. So I knew that both of them had to be positive answers. Of course, if you can't do it in your head, just do it to the side, but do do things in different ways just to check. It's really important to check. Let's finish that inequality off. And there you have it. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun.